So last time we looked at the concept of validity. We talked about valid arguments. And a valid argument is one where if each of the premises is true, then the conclusion would have to be true as well. So whether an argument is valid is sort of a structural thing. Uh, to say that an argument is valid is not to say that you agree with the conclusion or even that you agree with any of the premises. It's just to say that it has this structure that if the premises were true, the conclusion would have to be true, or the truth of the premises would force the truth of the conclusion. So there isn't really a separate definition of invalid. Um, an invalid argument is just one which isn't valid. In other words, it could be that all the premises are true, yet the conclusion is false. So invalid arguments fail in a certain way. They fail to transmit the truth of the premises were they to be true to the conclusion. Let's give some examples of invalid arguments. Um, so here's, here's a premise. Every Texan is an American. And second premise, every New Yorker is an American. And let's make the conclusion every Texan is a New Yorker. Now this is patently an invalid argument. It's not hard to see that this is invalid. It is possible that each premise is true and yet the conclusion is false. In fact, it's not only possible, it's actual, right? It is true that every Texan is an American. If we're talking about citizens of Texas and citizens of America, it is true that every New Yorker is an American. And yet it's false that every Texan is a New Yorker. There are Texans who aren't New Yorkers, right? So just because of uh, our actual experience, we know that this is an invalid argument because, in fact, each premise is true, and yet the conclusion is false. Now let's consider uh, something a little bit more philosophical. Let's consider an argument with just one premise, and the premise says, there is evil in the world. And the conclusion is there is no God. So there's no there's nothing that says that there has to be more than one premise in an argument. And this argument just has one premise and one conclusion. And um, this is clearly an invalid argument. And you should agree that it's an invalid argument, whether you, whether you believe in God or whether you're an atheist or whether you're an agnostic. It doesn't matter. Um, and remember, all we're saying when we're saying it's invalid, we're not saying that it has a false conclusion. We're not saying that it has a true conclusion. We're just saying it's possible for uh, each premise to be true, in this case all one of them, and yet the conclusion is false. That is, the, f the conclusion does not follow from the premises. Now, it might be that somebody who says there is evil in the world, that there is no God, therefore there is no God, um, actually has in mind a valid argument, but they're being a little bit sloppy. Now, can you think of an extra premise that if we added it to this argument would make the argument valid? Just so you know, logicians call an argument with an unstated premise an enthymeme.
and they're very very common in everyday life. So how can we make this a valid argument and not an invalid one by adding a premise? Can you see how it would go? Alright, so we need a premise something like this. There's different ways to state it, but here's one way. If there were a God, then there would be no evil in the world. Now when we add this premise, the argument is valid. And it's not an enthymeme because we've now stated all the premises. And again, what we mean by saying it's valid is just that it's impossible for each premise to be true and the conclusion to be false. So if it's true that if there were a god, there would be no evil, presumably the idea is that a perfect being would totally prevent evil, if there were a perfect being, so, and we add the premise that there is evil in the world, then it would logically follow that there is no god. And again, this is just a point of logic. It's just a point about the structure of this argument, about how it's put together. When you say it's valid, you're not saying that you agree with the conclusion. What you're saying is, if this is true, and also if that were true too, then, in that circumstance, this conclusion would have to be true. So that's another example of an invalid argument. Let's consider one more. Um, First premise, every cat loves cheese. Second premise, every dog loves cheese. In conclusion, therefore, Every cat is a dog. Again, it's pretty clear that this is invalid. It's possible to have this circumstance that each premise is true and yet the conclusion still be false. Now, um, as a matter of fact, these premises aren't true, but again, you have to set aside the issue of whether the premises are true or not when you're evaluating an argument as valid or invalid. <clears throat> so suppose it were true that every cat in the whole world loved cheese. And suppose it were true that every dog in the whole world also loved cheese. Well, even if those were both true, it wouldn't follow that every cat is a dog. Right? It's possible that that's false, that no cat is a dog. Or there are some cats that aren't. Um, so again, that's an invalid argument, and an invalid argument is just one that fails the definition of validity.